Assalamualaikum, everyone. OK, inshallah. OK, so let me make this a little bit interactive. Um, how many of you have fell asleep in your khutbah before? Oh. <laughs> how, many, how many of you, I asked, how many of you fell asleep in your khutbah? Like, you know, if you ever fell asleep in your khutbah. OK, uh, you raised your hand really high. You're like, yes, last week. OK, um, how many of you feel, how many of you don't feel welcome in your masjid? Raise your hand. You don't feel welcome, one. Okay, you're probably scared to answer this question. Okay, no problem. Um, you know, when we talk about the challenges and how to raise next generation of leaders and how to deal with this youth work, again, like I mentioned, there are a lot of research has been done in our issues and we already know the problems. We already know how to even go about the issues and how to solve it. What's happening in our institutions, in our leadership, and why it's not taking place? I think that's where we need to really put some uh, focus and vision. I want to go back and ask, you know, I want you guys to think about the village that is we're missing. Like, so I grew up in Bangladesh. I remember um, if I made a mistake in the house, my uncles would get a piece. I would get a piece from my uncle. Then I would go to my aunt. Then everybody would be at me because everybody knew this is the mistake I made, right? So I had the entire village to fix me up. And uh, you know, uh, all the chapels and belts would be flying at me. But the point is, there was a village to raise in the children. And, 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 that, and we need to bring that village back. You know, some of the solutions to most of our problems is us. We always tend to think that Imam is going to just transform our children. The Sheikh is going to say some dua and, and, and all of a sudden he's like angel. No, that's not how it works. You know, we can play a major role, and to play that major role, sometimes we forget we are the messenger of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even if you know one ayah, you know, share with others. We forget that we are the da'i. We have a responsibility as an American Muslim. We have blessings. We have resources. How are we using that resource? What are we going to do? How can we give back? And sometimes it's a very small alignment in our lifestyle. You know, if you feel like your kids are not listening to you, send your kids to somebody that you know they'll listen to those parents. And you take their kids under your arms and become their mentors. Sometimes it's just a simple alignment that can work in our communities. And we have tested this really well through our MIM project, uh, Mass Youth Ministry project. When we go to communities and we listen to people, we understand the issues and we come up with concrete solutions. That's what we do. We try to customize that programming and really work on the ground. But beyond that, you know, I have a seven-year-old son that I had to talk to him about LGBT issues. I never thought I, could, I have to talk to him about, you know, he asked me, Baba, can, you know, can men and men marry each other? Do you know how painful it is to answer that question? You know, beyond that, I had to also talk to him about school shootings. Right? This, this was to my seven and five year olds and how to hide if there is a shooting happening in your school. So these are legitimate issues that we're dealing with. But, you know, from a mass perspective or the youth ministry perspective, we come into a community and we feel like, look, okay, here's the data, here's how we're going to go about it, this is the solutions. But we have to hold also our leaders accountable on how to go about those solutions. It's not going to be an overnight problem because we have family members that are coming out. Like one of the questions is saying, that what do I do if a family member comes out and they're you know, going through identity crisis? These are real issues as a community. And it's going to get worse if we don't do something about it. And each and every one of you in this room has the responsibility. Nobody's coming, guys. Okay? I know we're all waiting for Jesus, <laughs> but he's not coming yet. Don't, don't, don't just wait for a miracle. Get active. Get engaged. Transform yourself so you can give back. Every one of us have a value in here. Every one of us can play a role of a mentor. If you're not able to play a role of a mentor, you can play a role of a leader. If you're not able to play a role of a leader, you can play a role of a life coach or any other areas that you can give back. When we start to get involved, when we're gonna get, transform ourselves, when my tarbiya is straight, when my relationship with God is straight, I'm able to give back. We all have to play that role. We cannot just depend on small infrastructure that, that is broken, the, the, the massage that is not serving. No, it's what you can do for your masjid, not what your masjid can do for you. Right? So we really have to be realistic about our approach and our solutions. So as uh, Mass Youth Ministry, and you know, we have, uh, alhamdulillah, I'm glad our sheikh came here, one of our clients, 
we went to this community and implemented a youth program with nothing. It's a very small grassroots community and few volunteers came through. MashaAllah, they have a thriving junior program happening right now and we're developing and building and we're taking it to the next level. It's work. Yes, we all want to hear Sheikh Suleiman. No problem, listen to him. But at the end of the day, you have to go back to your community and really be active. That's where the real impact is. That's where the real work is when nobody's watching you and no celebrity is inspiring you. That's where it requires you to be inspired yourself. And this is why, you know, tarbiyah driven focus is important, is how we as a leaders give back to our society and our community. It's an amana. It's an amana on all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of you, bless you, encourage you, and inspire you to become the agents of change in your communities, in your family members, in your societies, in your institutions. Inshallah khair. I'm going to go over some questions that uh, we received on the app. Again, you can ask these questions if you like. Uh, one of the questions I'm going to start is, what can we do when our Muslim community is very small? We don't have an actual imam, let alone stable leaders at the masjid. So the youth space is not there. How can we bring them to the masjid when there are no mentors? Uh, can I take this question and I'll go back and forth. You know, um, again, like I mentioned, don't wait. Don't wait. Sometime, you know, it, it's, it's just, you don't have to have a center. Like one of the programs we did called Maker's Hike. We went to the hike and we gave a program packets to these youth workers. Say, okay, go to hike. Take a bunch of young people out on a uh, hiking, pro you know, in, in the evening or in the weekend. And then we gave them a tarbiyah dose. Anytime you do something, you know, it's so easy. You could, there's so many resources available in front of you. And, you st and, and it's all about creating that welcoming space, non judgmental, come as you are, learn, right? Being open minded. Gather these young people, say, let's go to hike. And this project was very interesting. All we ask them to do is like, as you're hiking, give everybody instructions, grab something, grab a leaf, and reflect on this. Allah created this. And just walk away. Right? Sometimes we think the sheikh has to be there, the has to be a Quran khatira. You know, it's interesting in our tradition, you'll not find hadith that is not interactive. Prophet always asked the question, oh Bilal, why do you think uh, this exists? And Bilal would be like, Ya Rasulullah, why? There's always this dialogue happenings. But how do we create our youth uh, space in our masajid? Sheikh speaking, everybody listen, go home, stay quiet. No, we have to create this engagement. So if you're a small community and you actually have a better opportunity rather than going large community and you're lost, you have a perfect opportunity to create those kind of intimate programming and alignment. And please see me after and I'll give you some program ideas, contents, and I'll love to help you initiate anything that you feel like that will benefit your community. I'll go to the next question. Can you comment on how to deal with uh, as a Muslim with homosexuality and overall sexual identity crisis our youth are facing today, what do we do when a family member comes out as gay but is also still Muslim? Okay. Very important. We have to understand that our kids are facing these challenges day and night. And I'm not gonna give you a fiqh answer, but I'm gonna give you the real answer that I would approach. The relationship with Allah is the most crucial thing we all have to protect. At the end of the day, it's a tendency they're challenged with, right? In our tradition, you know, when we, you'll see parents like, oh, the Lut Allah is some this, you gotta go to Jahannam if you, let's step back. It's a tendency issue. That means that he has a thought process of the same gender. As long as this person is not acting on it, they're not held accountable and that's their jihad. That's their battle of their life. That is their challenge. Very important that if you push your kid away because he's in that area, you have to remind him that Allah loves him, Allah is challenging him, Allah is trying him with this trial, and he has to pass through it and seek counseling, seek other ways to protect his, you know, protect him and how he is. But do not tell him, oh, if you ever think like, the moment you break that relationship between you and that child, you, you start causing damage. It's a tendency issue, brothers and sisters. And we have so many kids coming out in our community saying, this is how I feel. And no, and no, there's not an institution, there's not many organizations that are really tackling these issues. They're taking it to the imam. Wallahi, like, uh, you know, one of, the, um, uh, one of my mentees reached out to me and he sent me a picture and told me like, oh yeah, my sister you know, likes this Hispanic guy and my parents don't want her to get married. I was like, and I looked at the picture, you know what I saw? She's sitting with a cover on, which she doesn't wear hijab, 
and there's an imam reading reciting on her. I'm like, why is the imam reciting on her? Oh, the, my parents think she has a jinn. Yeah, his name is Jose, he's not a jinn. So I think sometimes even the religious community comes with in a way that, you know, that I, I have an issue, there was a sister came up to me telling me that the Somali community, the, the young boys are told to memorize and they're smoking weed and memorizing. Sometimes our own religious community does more damage to our kids and pushes them away. We have to be careful how we approach those issues, very sensitive, get educated on how to approach it, make sure that relationship with Allah is consistent no matter what happens.